Okay, so what we're going to do now is solve the case. That's what we do in unit four. We're going to solve this case. <laughs> and I say some other things here. Um, this is just a review of the incremental cash flows that we discussed. This is a review of inflation or an example we can talk about that you'll see. Uh, I'll talk about that in the video. I want to start here. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is compute the NPV of this project, and we're going to do it in three steps. We're going to compute first the present value of income or the NPV of income, <coughs> the PV of investment, and third, the PV of tax yields. Okay, so there's three parts. And the reason for dividing these, I'm going to explain. Investment has a slightly different treatment with taxation than income does. So we're gonna tease those apart and then we're gonna separate that from tax yields. And here this slide, I'm going to explain a uh, why, right? So remembering that depreciation is not a cash flow is important. What we're gonna co co um, compute, we're gonna calculate the net operating cash flows. Net operating cash flows are revenues less expenses or operating costs minus taxes. <clears throat> so let's put, um, this is our first equation, right? <clears throat> Expanding a little bit out, what, what is taxes? Taxes are determined on your net revenues after depreciation, right? So you have to take off the, so this is the D I mentioned, the depreciation. We're gonna learn how to calculate that. And so then this is the taxable income for your company. And you're gonna multiply that by TC. What's TC? What does TC stand for? So this is a second formula I will substitute into here. So think about what TC is. What I'm going to do now is make a calculation. I am going to rearrange these variables for values, and I'm going to put net revenue together like this and show you something. I'm going to write R minus E minus TC R minus E. Oh, let me. R minus E plus TCD. So, and what is D? Depreciation. Right. So D is depreciation. So have you figured out what TC is? Okay, it's okay. Appreciation each year. So this is per year we're gonna do this. All right, so I've just, all I've done is multiply TC, which is times that and times that. TC is the corporate tax rate. That's what the C is for, corporate tax rate. I have to be specific because there's different tax rates. There's the corporate tax rate, there's the individual tax rate there, and that varies the marginal tax rate. 
and then there's income um, or dividend income tax rate, and then there's, so there's different tax rates, right? So we have to be very clear. This is the corporate tax rate. In some jurisdictions, it can be higher than in others, some countries. Um, some countries incentivize business by lowering the tax rate relatively. All right. So um, looking at it like this, now what I'm going to do, just look at the blue as like a factor. I'm going to, I'm going to pull that out. And then I'm going to be left with, if you can see this, this is just like a one in front, right? So I'm going to factor it R minus E out, which is net revenue. And that's going to go here, I mean, before taxes. So this is earnings before depreciation and taxes. And then this term, I'm going to, when I, whenever you see that term, I'm going to say, this is called after tax. Taxation. And that leaves this term alone. So notice I separate, I tease apart the depreciation and it's a plus. Depreciation is not a loss. Depreciation in terms of cash flow is actually a bonus. And this is the total tax savings, which depends on the amount you depreciated and your corporate tax rate. So if there's a higher tax rate, ironically, you get higher tax yield, right? So this is also an incentive to buy capital, to buy equipment, to invest in machinery, right? So this is how the tax system incentivizes business. Okay, so it's it's a tax write-off, right? The depreciation. Exactly, but this is how we see it as the benefit of doing that because depreciation is not a cash flow. That's the point I'm making. It turns out like a the write-off benefit, right? The tax, the tax shield. Hmm. So this is why I can separately do this step and I separate income and investment and you'll see why um, because may, it's mainly because of the taxation, how I deal with taxes in each case. It's different in investment. All right, so you ready for the next bit or do you have questions about this? I don't, I don't have specific questions, but we we can continue. We can continue. Okay, let's continue. So I'm going to skip this one for now. All right, so let's overview the case. The overview of the case is, oh, we didn't talk about this amount, did we? You guys never mentioned. Is this incremental after we did the whole reading back here? Let's go back for an instant to look here. Was that amount incremental? Put it in yellow because why? Whether I take the project or not, I've already spent the money. It's a sunk cost. It's not an incremental cash flow. It's not an incremental cash flow. So I just write it down here in our inventory of information I'll cross it out because we don't use it um, we have to include the uh, planes we have to include the uh, revenues at uh, calculating the sales at two thousand dollars and the operating cost of one thousand dollars is just one thousand per ticket in rev net revenue. Then we have to look at the side effect of losing passengers to other destinations. Uh -huh. Then the in investment in networking capital, I have to show you how to get that. And then UAIR already owns a terminal. This is the uh, 10,000, sorry, $10 million for you. The K is for thousands of dollars, right? And then the sale value. So this has um, an impact as well. We refer to this as the salvage or residual value. So let me put that down because I didn't mention it before. Oh, he's blue. I 
I didn't mention that on the, let me put it on here because this is where I put all my terminology. So in this case here, uh, this is called the salvage. Okay, back to all right. So which uh, which ones where where do these go? Which one goes into income? So I mentioned this over here. Which goes into income? Which one goes into investment? Which one goes into tax shield? What can I consider income? Which can I consider investment? So the number of round trip tickets would be income. Very good. The operating cost per ticket, uh, that would be investment. Mm. No, that would be income too because it's net revenue. So yeah, that would be, so this is investment. This is investment. I'm not investment, sorry, income. Income, income, income. And then this would be, what about the lost sales? There will be an expense, so. So income, net revenue, right? Net operating okay. cash flow. So that will go in there. And then, okay, what about the planes? An expense as well, you know. Uh, careful, uh, careful. Uh, it's it's going to be treated different. Remember I told you, I promised you it was going to be treated different. So it goes into investment because of that different treatment as it we're going to do the depreciation and all of that. So that's going to go in investment, but it it's, yeah, it, it costs us money, but the tax treatment is as a as an asset and depreciation kicks in so that's going to be an investment what about networking capital thank you for trying this by the way you were going to remember <laughs> after this so what about networking capital what did i call it i called it networking capital well, i don't have it eight Say it again, Damiana. That's operations. Okay, so this is operations. But we're going to put it in as investment. We're going to refer to this as networking capital investment. So this is going to go in investment. And then, okay, what about the opportunity costs? Where will it go? Income or investment or tax shield? Income. Very good. Goes to the income. What about the salvage? Income. So it feels like an income, but we're going to put it into the investment because this is the other side of, you know, closing up the project is that we are going to get some money for the planes. So yeah, we're going to put it in investment with the planes. And then there's information here. We got a discount rate and we have a tax, a corporate tax rate. And we are ready to go. So we're going to take the ticket price, number of tickets, the lost sales, and the opportunity cost of the terminal together and create a spreadsheet. Now, when the when you have mixed cash flows like this, it can be helpful to make a spreadsheet to see all the numbers, right? When the cash flows are level, however, you should be using the simplification formulas for annuities to solve the case and even perpetuity. And we'll talk about that in the example.
So here are, like we say, these are the sales revenues because it's 16,000 times 2,000 is $32 million because these are in thousands of dollars. 32 million first at the, by the end of the first year, 48 million by the end of the second. So even though obviously you're selling tickets throughout the year, to make these calculations, we just assume they're end of the year cash flows. Okay, so we estimate them as end of the year. And then, um, so then this is the side effect of not making those sales. And it's like 100 tickets at $2,000 each. How was it? It was 100 tickets at $2,000 each. So it's $200,000 loss. And those are the estimated losses. So those are revenues. Then there's the cost, operating costs. We have the opportunity cost we're going to put for the terminal, the variable cost of flying people to the Bahamas, and the cost savings because we're not flying people to the other destination. So out of all these rows, this is the only one students usually hesitate on. Just thinking about this. Yes, we're going to lose the sales, but we don't have to fly those people anymore. So there's a, a difference of, you know, subtracting these, you're still going to have a loss, but it's not as bad, right? If you consider the cost savings. Then we add down each column to get earnings before depreciation and taxes and then calculate the after-tax amounts in every year using 40% rate. So you can practice making these calculations. You can try and use Excel, but in the end, most of my exercises are with level cash flows, but you should be able to do this just as well in a spreadsheet. I find it tedious in a way. Some students like it because they come from accounting now the goal, this is all we've done so far is put together the income piece. We have the other two pieces still, right? We have investment and present value of the tax shield. So what would be ideal would be to be able to put them all together as like separate projection of cash flow so then you can have a total project cash flow projection so we're going to do that as well as just look for the npv so what i'm going to do is just get the npv of each part as an alternative so i got the npv of that as 23 million dollars income so our investment and our tax shields still have to be calculated okay that we're not we're not sure yet that this is worth it we have to first figure out the investment cash flows icf well i don't have to write that it's kind of clear right all right so let's go for the investment cash flow so you can check all these numbers on your own don't forget that there's nothing up front it's just a zero here so you're going to put a zero into your cf keys all right net operating um our networking capital, how do we analyze this? An investment networking capital represents an increase in the networking capital allocated to the project. So it means that you have to take resources out of the other projects of the firm, so other, other destinations, right? And you have to apply them to this project. It's important. So when you're looking at this from the perspective of what this project requires, um, let's go back a bit over here. Oh, I didn't put it here, did I? I put it here, 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 here. Okay, so these are the networking capital requirements. Um, and they've been separated into inventory, cash. So this is what we, we anticipate we're going to need up front by the end of the first, second, third, and then at the end of the project that we don't need anything. So what is the networking capital required? In each year. 
So add these and subtract these, and what do you get? Put the number here. So, Professor, it will be 600,000 plus 1 million plus 1.3 million minus 1 million exactly. point 1. Yes. Minus, wait, my result was 1.6 million. Okay, 1.6 million. Perfect. Keep going. Okay. I got 2.4 million in year one. Right, keep going. So you see how you can do this in Excel or just with your calculator? I got uh, 3 million year two. I got 2.2 million. Mm -hmm. And then zero, right? Good. Great. So any objections? So this is what we require to, to, to operate. So we need immediately 1.6 million 
By the end of the first year, 2.4 million. By the end of the second and so on. So when these amounts are diminished, we have to reconstitute um, them, right? We always want to have 2.4 million, right? So if um, we want to make sure we have inventory of 850,000, in other words. So what we're going to do is figure out what more is needed in each year. So we're going to calculate the change in networking capital required each period. And we're going to do that with, well, immediately we need 6, 1.6 million. And then we need an additional 800,000. Now, how did I do that? I just subtracted. 24 minus 16 or 2.4 minus 1.6. Okay, now, even for the second year, I need an extra 600,000. And by the end of the third year, I need, aha, I need less, right? Because it's going down now. I'm closing up um, these, the, the amounts, the, the, I'm going to return this financing back to the other operations of the firm, right? I'm going to release them. So slowly I'm going to do that in the third year. I need 800,000 less. And then I need um, to release the whole 2.2 million. Okay, so we're not done yet. There are three steps to this. You're not done yet. What you need to do now is turn these into networking capital investment cash flows. In fact, I just keep writing down what I need, but in terms of investment, the firm needs to invest. So I'm going to change the sign so that these cash flows are out of pocket. You got that? So it's a three-step process. Now this is the next one will be a positive, and that is gonna align with what I said that this money goes back or this allocation of financing goes back to the firm. So these are what I need for my analysis. Any questions? So you use those cash flows to find the, in, in the question you showed uh, uh, earlier, to find the net present value at the, at So that's gonna go into, that's gonna go into this. But we have more things that go in here. We got to put the planes. We have to put the salvage. What else did we say? So we said uh, the planes, the networking capital. See, these are the same numbers here. You see? That we just got. And then this is the salvage. So those are the three things we're going to put in to that analysis. So... Okay, so what we need, I said, was the salvage. So we need to compute the effect on of the sale of the of the planes. To do that, we need to determine the book value of the planes. So here's my spreadsheet. And um, on your formula sheet for your test, if you can put, the first, you know, you can put this on your formula sheet so you don't forget. I don't mind. You can put this in so you remember how to make this calculation. But actually, you know, the, this next test is going to be virtual, but the final 
Um, sorry, the third test. I'm just trying to think if you'll need that. But anyway, put it on your formula sheet. It's always good to have a formula sheet, whether you're using it for a test or just for studying or for a virtual test. All right, so that you need those headings. So what is this? These are the numbers from the uh, makers, makers table. This to calculate D, now we're gonna calculate big D. Big D is made up of little d, the depreciation rate times the 40 million in planes. So that means that we can depreciate 5.7, almost $6 million up front. Well, at the end of the first year. And that leaves how much of the plane? This is the UCC is undepreciated. Cost of capital. Okay, so how did I get that? I took the 4 million, 40 million, and I subtracted this amount. So this is what is left in terms of the IRS, in terms of my book valuation. Don't worry about this last column yet. Let's finish this. Uh, let's complete this table. And I'm going to then ask you, um, what was I going to ask you? Okay, it'll come up. Okay, let's finish this table. Let's do the next one. You just take this number. So the 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 um maker's yeah. table has. Mm -hmm. I think I get. It. I think I get it. It's it's like the amortization table. Like you multiply. Yeah, it's going down. Yeah. And in in the second year, I have to multiply uh point two four five by thirty four million two hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. Yes, and and it's kind of like it's like it's like a a sinking fund kind of table, but you got to use these changing rates and there's a pattern here that's been figured out for you so it's very simple okay it could be much more complex than this but it's very simple so all you do is take 2.45 or 0.245 sorry and you multiply it by 40 million again so just follow the rules here okay okay, okay. yeah yeah it's 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 by 40 million of all the time, okay. All the time, yeah. So what do you get for the next one? I got uh, thirty million two hundred thousand. Sorry, what what did you get for the uh, D in year two? Nine million eight hundred thousand. Right, and then thirty. Thirty million two hundred thousand. So what you did was then look at your underappreciate, subtract this, and you get thirty million. Is that right? Or that wrong? I think that's wrong. <laughs> now you can also do this in Excel. Yeah, so it's, it's smaller, right? So you got to take this undepreciated amount minus this, not against 40 million again, you, you go here every time. So let me make that clear. So after the first year, you do um 
UCC minus D in each year after the first year. And it looks so confusing. It's easier just to tell you. So you go to the undepreciated, what's left in the book value, and you diminish it by nine, and you get 24 something. 24. Okay, so again, ignore the, the right side column. Keep going. Now go back to the 40 million and multiply 0.175. So if you're just watching, just try and make the calculations to confirm what I'm doing. You know where the numbers come from. So this one will be 7 million. Leaving 17. Yeah, yeah, and, and D will be 5 million, mm -hmm. and the answer will be, uh, well, 12 million. Exactly. No, it will be 12 million 480, right? Right. Okay, okay. I got it, I got it. It's pretty easy. I got All right, it. so you just got to remember. <laughs> it's pretty easy. All right, so this is called the book value. This is what remains of the planes. What is the market value of the planes? So times four, like 3,120,000 times four is equal to the market value of the planes. What is the market value? And these are all assumptions, right? I don't know for sure what's going to happen in four years. but So when you make the calculation of four times 3,120, you get the same number. Now, is that a coincidence? Should it always be like that? It should be pretty close, right? So so it doesn't have to be the same. I just made it the same, easy to make it simple here, right? But in the problems, you have to check. You always have to check. Now, in this case, they're the same, but I'll show you how to deal with it when they're not the same. Um, and it could be the same because maybe uh, you, could, you could calculate this all the way and find the book value and then just make the assumption. Just say, you know, I don't want to deal with capital gains and losses in my projection. I'm just going to make it equal to book value. So that's a way to deal with that. But it's not necessarily going to be the same. And I, but I'll teach you how to deal with it when they're, they're different. Because right now, we're going to sell it exactly for the market value. So there's no deal. There's nothing to deal with in terms of taxing. All right. So we've done that. We did this. Uh, I filled this. Okay, so this is all done. This is just repeating what we already did. So if they are different, in the URK, salvage is equal to book value. In general, the book value could be more than the salvage. In other words, you're not selling it for its book value, and you can declare a capital loss. So you save on taxes. It's a write-off. If the book value is less than the salvage, so you're selling it for more, than what's on your books, then you realize a capital gain and you actually have to pay taxes. So that's a bummer. Um, so what you're gonna do is in the year of the sale, 
you're going to add in the salvage plus the taxes, depending on the difference here. It's going to be a plus if the book value is higher, right? So you're going to get tax savings because you sold at a loss, or it's going to be a minus if you have capital gains. So I think you should transfer this formula to your formula sheet as well. And remembering that this is in the year of the sale. And you'll see, we'll do that together. In our case, there, this is just zero right? Because they are the same. There's no tax. And we're just going to deal with the salvage value, like how much we got for selling it. All right. So let's put all that information together. Here are the planes. This is number two. So this is investments in thousands of dollars. These are the plane, the expense of buying the planes. Um, and then this is the salvage from the plane in the fourth year. These are the networking capital investment cash flows that we discussed, and that's it. So put them together to get your projection for investment. Those are the amounts, and we can actually calculate the net present value or present value. And you see, aha, uh -huh, so what happened? Let's go back. Let's look. This was this is thirty-two million dollar investment, and what was our revenue? What was our income? Let's go back. Let's go back. If anybody remembers, we calculated twenty-three million in revenue. So should we pursue this project? Our revenues, our net revenue, in present value terms, is twenty-three, almost twenty-four million, but the investment required is. 32 million. Well, it depends on the last component. Now, as a result of purchasing the asset, do the tax shields, the tax savings from depreciation actually incentivize us to pursue this project? It turns out that it, it does. So the difference between 20, it's very, very close. The difference between, um, I should get this number so I have it. I'll have to keep going back. So let's get this number, take it with us. So let's put them all on one page. That didn't work. That didn't work. Come on. No, it's not being good for me. Let it... So anyway, 24, almost $24 million. Let me just put it down here. So we're one. Having a heck of a time. My pen. Got loose, sorry. And I'm just saying it approximately, okay? Well, maybe I should get the real number. Oh, geez, I'm really wasting time here. Okay, so basically, let me get the real number. It really makes a point. that we need all components, the benefit of the tax. Tax rules, oh, it's gonna happen again. I can't do this. It makes me, okay, so 24, I'm gonna just write 
Okay, so then the difference here is very close. So is this enough? The tax shields, let's look at the tax shields. So where do these come from? These tax shields going back to our table, let's go back to this one, are calculated. Remember the formula for net operating cash flows was just TCD. Okay, we're almost done. You guys stayed over time, which is good. So TCD is just taking this column and multiplying it by the tax rate. So this number is equal to 0 0.4 times 5. Seven two zero 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 zero. All right, so that's what you're gonna do all the way down. So 0. 0.4 times this, 0. 0.4 times this, and 0. 0.4 times that, and you get these numbers. And these numbers, these are cash flows at the end of each period that need to be discounted as well. So those numbers, I will prove to you they're the same. That's not good. Proof to you they're the same. See, now it worked. It didn't let me do it last time. I don't know why. So these are the same as these, right? 2.288 million, 3.92, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2. So that's where those numbers come from. And they discount to about $9 million. And when you put it all together, you, you have a positive NPV project, okay? It's 285,000 should you invest. Well, provided you've taken account of all the information, expenses and revenues, and all that you need to consider for this project, you should invest. If you want to see and vary some of those assumptions, you can do it like a sensitivity analysis, change some of the values and see if you still invest, right? Because these are just estimates. All right, so I am going to just say one more thing and let you go. The other way I could have put these numbers together was not doing one, two, and three, but taking the boxes of the cash flow projections for one, two, and three, and putting those together in what I call the total project cash flow. So this is one two, three, and these are the cash flows for the whole project. So this is another way, this is actually how you would, how we've been dealing with this till now, where the cash flows for the project are just given to you. And we've just looked at one example of how to get them. So you should invest. I asked you here to calculate the RIRR and how you would analyze it and so on. So I'm gonna stop there because we pretty much got to 12 o'clock. Do you have uh, any questions for me? So I'm just gonna say, go ahead, um, watch the other videos. You're gonna understand more now and start solving um, the exercises. Next week, I'll just talk about the first few slides if you still have questions about the first few slides. Um, but mostly I wanna spend time on solving um, the exercises. We're not gonna meet on Friday. You're gonna work independently. But then the next Friday is Good Friday, isn't it? Am I wrong? Let me double check. Not yet. No, next Friday we can meet. We're good for next week. It's the following Friday. Okay, so the 31st we're going to meet and we'll solve some problems. Well, Professor, oh, isn't the, test. The, the test? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't solve problems on the 31st. So you guys have to work independently on this. So what we can do is set up a question period. I guess I'll write an email about it. I'm trying to remember my schedule here. So let's set up a question uh, meeting. And please study now like don't wait till the last minute there's just a lot to do and you'll feel very overwhelmed because there's many exercises to look at but once you do them you'll see there's lots of pad there's a pattern and then lots of repetition so that's going to be the test we're not going to meet on friday you have a week and a half to review these i mean i did have everything up for weeks 
So just get going on uh, reviewing the exercises and we'll try and set up um, a date that we can meet and I can answer questions, okay? So from now on, you're just basically studying for the test. You have like nine days. The test will be mounted from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it shouldn't take you 12 hours. It should just take you a couple of hours. But um, what it will look like uh, will be like multiple choice questions again. I do not, well, we'll see. I don't think I'm going to give you a big case, but solving the cases will inform you. So make sure you solve all the problems I've given. And don't use the solutions as a security blanket or a false sense of security because you need to solve them first and then look at the answers to see where you went wrong. Okay, so be very disciplined with that. All right, any questions for me? Uh, Professor, can I speak with you after the meeting is done so I can speak to you privately? Yes, sure. So I'm gonna stop the recording. Okay, and I'll say goodbye to everybody else. Okay. Take care, teacher. Thank you, you too. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Professor. Um, oh. I, I have some questions that I will send to you later. Okay, we can we can also meet Saviana. We can meet sometime if you want. Will you be giving um office hours on Friday? On this Friday? No. Um, but what did I say? I think I said I would be available. That's what I said in the email, right? If you want to meet at six o'clock. So I'm gonna send that email again. Uh, okay. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 9 or 8 p.m. That's what I said. Yeah, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you have questions. Okay. But, well, what what I'll do is I'll make an email explaining my questions. Sure. We we can um look we for an hour. Yeah. Okay. Very. Good. Thank you, Daviana. Okay. Bye. Bye. Efren. Yeah, you're still recording the meeting. Am I? I yeah, you are. Stop share. Yeah. I didn't stop. Okay.